second. So, you ready? Go ahead. We give praise, glory, and honor to the Most High Yah by way of Yahushua You can get you John 12 and 39. Yahushua Hamashiach, Yahushua Hello? Hello? All right. John 5 39. Search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that you have not the love of Allah He made you. So let's go over here to Acts chapter 18 by verse 24. So we'll look at a policy in the new, in the new covenant. And then turn around and see if there's anything in the in the Tanakh or in the uh, law that would show forth a relevance of what because it has to be a basis of what Apollos did, right? Yeah. It has to be something that shows us that well Apollos will have a testimony of doing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, before we even look at that, go over here to Deuteronomy 17. Or maybe Deuteronomy 19. Just hold that Acts 18. And it says, One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. And any sin that he sin at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So we know we're going to have to go through two, three witnesses. To establish anything to be able to accept it. So we're going to come back to Acts 18 and 24 and sit back and look at, matter of fact, read Acts 17 and, 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 and 9. Matter of fact, make a set of 17 and 6. Acts 17 and 6 before we even read Acts 18 and 24. So we know if Apollos is one witness, it's going to have to be another witness to at least validate what he did, right? Mm -hmm. So let's sit back and look at it. It says, and when they found them not, they drew Drayson and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying that these have turned the world upside down, are uh, come hither also, whom Jason have received. And all these, and these all do contrary to the degrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Yahushua. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night under Berea, who come and thither went into the synagogue of the Yahudim. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Hello? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we're looking at. you got to be able to receive the word with a ready mind. You remember that's what he told Solomon, right? That's what David told Solomon, right? Have a willing heart and a ready mind, right? So then he said, and they searched the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. Now that's one thing that since any of y'all who done known me and tell you this, you don't got to believe me based on what I say. You know what I'm saying? You cause you supposed to be going back examining the scriptures on anything that we talk about anyway. And I ain't never told any of y'all not to do it. Because I don't do it. I done told you. Just examine it and let the book talk. So let's look at the pilots. Acts 18 and 24. And it's saying, a certain Yahudim named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of Yahuwah. So if he was instructed in the way of Yahuwah, then what was he instructed in? Well, this whole right this here and go to Acts 22, and you'll see what he was instructed, if he was instructed in the way of Yahuwah. And then get your Isaiah 35 and 8, because you're going to have to know what that way he was instructed in. Acts 22 and 1. Then get your Isaiah 35 and 8. He say, Men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the I bring tongue to them, they kept the more silence, and he said, I am truly a man which am a Yahudim born in Tarsus, a city of Sicilia. 
yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous towards Elohim as you are this day. So this is what Apollos knew. He was instructed in the way of Yahuwah. That means he was instructed in the law. Matter of fact, get to Isaiah 35 and 8, and then get to Deuteronomy 29 and 29, and Amos 3 and 7. Make it five. Thirty-five and five. Isaiah 35 and 5. Yes, Yahoo 35 and 5. Let's take it that route. Let's sit back and we can see what this buddy man say. He say, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Now, this is sitting back talking about the wilderness and the solitary place and it'll bloom and this, that, there, and the other. Because he says, Strengthen ye in verse 3. He says, Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. You know, the only thing that can strengthen a weak hand and weak knees is faith. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't trust ye and y'all forever for trusting you as everlasting strength. The only reason why anybody would be weak is because their faith would be off. You know what I'm saying? Now the only thing that the flesh will always get weak, but your faith will hold you up in that instance. You know what I'm saying? Because he told you that the Ruach is willing, the flesh is weak. And as we looked at before, the flesh will ever be present with you because you're in this body. So you'll be worn against it. As we talked about with the word Nephash. One of the meanings of Nephash is dubious, suspect, questionable. The flesh always questions. Now, there are certain things now. Now, I want y'all to understand this here and understand clearly what I'm saying. I want to make sure this is perfectly picture clear what I'm about to say. What I'm talking about is the flesh will question the things of Elohim. You know what I'm talking about? There's nothing wrong with asking questions. You understand what I'm telling you? Y'all get that clear? There's nothing wrong with asking questions. There's nothing wrong with getting clarity on the topic and you asking me a question and say, can you show me this? Because that's not what I'm saying. And I don't want nobody to get the, the thought process that that's what I'm saying. You understand what I'm talking about? But the flesh will question the things of Elohim and doubt the things of Elohim. That is the flesh's nature. That's how it rolls. That's how it rocks. There's nothing wrong with asking questions to get an understanding. That's something totally different. So you've got to understand the difference between the two. So when y'all sit back and look at it, hold what you got and come over here to, uh, to Luke chapter 4. When he talking about opening the eyes of the blind and opening the ears of the deaf. Matter of fact, John chapter 9 come to my head too to go along with that. And we'll look at that as well. John chapter 3 in my head too, but we're going to get to that in a minute. About uh, 4 and 16. Make it 4 and 14. Luca, Lucas 4 and 14. And it states, And Yahushua returned in the power of the Ruach into Galilee. And there went unto him a fame, of, went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being esteemed of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up as his custom was. He went into the synagogue on the Shabbat day and stood up to read. Stood up for to read. And there was a delivered unto him the book of the prophet Yeshayahu. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it is written. The Ruach of Yahuwah is upon me, because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now he said to recover the sight of the blind. Now let's go back and let's look at John chapter 9, because Isaiah 35 is talking about that he... The eyes of the blind shall be open and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Now, we done dealt with this in time past when that Telehim 119 or that Psalms 119 opened my eyes to behold wondrous things out of thy Torah. And now we're going to look at Acts chapter 22 to go along with this John chapter 9. Just bear with me. There's a conclusion to it. John chapter 9. Uh, let's sit back and we'll look at this here. See what verse did I need? Let's look at about verse 22. John 9 and 22. You can 9 and 9 and 22. Hello? Okay. These words spake his parents because they feared the Yahudim. For the Yahudim had agree, all, agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Mashiach, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give Elohim the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. 
So you got these people saying that the work that Amashah was doing, they say he was a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that, whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him, again, what did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not hear. Whereas would you hear it again, will you also be his disciples? What do you think he's really trying to state that he say, I told you already, but you did not hear? Because in the 10th chapter of John, he say, I, I'm, I'm going to slide and read. You ain't got to go get it. In the 10th chapter of John, about the 25th verse, it said, Yahushua answered them, I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not because you are not of my sheep as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me. So guess what? If his sheep hear his voice, then guess what he done? You know, you've seen him. I open the ears of the deaf, right? Opening the ears of the deaf is being that you're going to be able to hear the word. That's why he said, if I tell you again when you believe on him, because faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word of Allah. The only way a man can be able to preach the word is if Yah puts it in your mouth. Now, we're going to get to that to show you a policy Alexander, and you're going to see Moses following the same exact pattern as a policy. The only difference was Moses wasn't even instructed in the way of Yahuwah yet. Because when, when, when y'all give Moses a word, they hadn't even came up out of Misraim yet. They hadn't even been given the law yet. So guess what that means Moses was? He was in an unclean state. They hadn't came through the Red Sea and been immersed. He hadn't got the law yet. He hadn't went up on the mount. He hadn't did any of that yet. You know what I'm saying? Any of that yet. You know what I'm saying? Just sit back and look at that. Get up. Oh, let me see what the verse is, where we at now. Get up. Verse 28. Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that Elohim spake unto Moses, As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. They say, oh, say we know y'all with this dude, but this nigga right here, we know y'all with Moses. We don't know this nigga. We don't know where he come from. He said, The man answered and said unto them, Why herein is it a marvelous thing? That ye know not from whence he is, and yet he have opened my eyes. Now we know that Elohim hear not sinners, but if any man worship Elohim, it may be a worshiper of Elohim and do his will, him he hear. You know what the key thing it is to be, that be a worshiper of Elohim? You know what would make anybody a worshiper of Elohim? The belief is what's going to make somebody a worshiper of Elohim. That's why he separated the two. He said, if any man be a worshiper of Elohim and do his will. Mm -hmm. What did he tell you in the fourth chapter of John? He seeketh true worshipers to worship him. Those that worship him, worship him in Ruach and in truth. The worship him in Ruach is to believe. To worship him in truth is to obey. Mm -hmm. To be a worshiper of Elohim, you must believe. As we've been talking about this here, because that's just been on pale heart real heavy. That's the biggest burden to the whole house of Yasharah. We don't believe. You know what I'm saying? This is why we don't have no power to stand against. That's why in a certain situation that you know what I'm talking about, that I was in, that okay, it wasn't expedient or wise to do that. But I wasn't going to do that right there though. That wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to get that far because the strength was that strong. You like this here? Like, now you can't you can't cross that line. You know what I'm saying? This ain't because the reason being because this right here is not wise because it could lead to that. Mm -hmm. But then I got enough self-control to know I ain't going to do that. Mm -hmm. When you sit back and look at every man that sat in their room and like, well, I couldn't have did that. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew I would have did this. They didn't have to sit back and look at that whole bag. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they could care less. They could care less. Where we at? Where we at? Verse 32. He says, since the world began, it was not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind. Y'all sit now since y'all see back how we said that he says since the beginning of the world it wasn't possible for a man to open the eyes of a man that was born blind. Mm -hmm. Now hold this John chapter 9 and come over here to Isaiah 29. Because y'all don't even sit back and realize all of us were born blind, yet we had eyes to see though. Because I know I was born blind. Yeah. Well, that story bigger than just about a man who. We're blind. 
it ain't even really significant of um, anybody who was blind. Isaiah 29, yes, Yahoo 29, and about 10. He said, For you who have poured upon you the ruach of deep sleep, and have covered your eyes, the prophets and your rulers and the seers have he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which a men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray. Then he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. So he said, Can't nobody read the book to tell me what it actually means or what it says is sealed. And just what he said, your prophets and your rulers, y'all closed the book up so you can't see it. So this is going along to what I was telling y'all. You can't spit the book unless y'all give it to you. Because he stated the man's a man of his word. I put a deep sleep on you. I covered your eyes up the way you can't even. You grabbing the book and you saying the book's sealed. Now I'm going to get back and show you who un unsealed the book. And then give you the ability to tell what's in the book. He's saying the vision of all is becoming to you as a word that a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this I pray thee. He saith I cannot it is sealed. Verse 12 where I'm at. And he's saying, the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he is saying, I am not learned. <laughs> so he's talking about, you got some people that say they can't see and they ain't taught. But he said he came to open the eyes of the blind, though, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So let's come over here to hold this John chapter 9 and Revelation chapter 6. Pardon me if I'm going too fast. This stuff just comes to my brain like this. Here. I might not even get to these words. Just save them for another time. I just deal with this single amount. I won't try to jam all that in there. It's Revelation chapter 5, my apologies. 5 and 1. Revelation 5 and 1. And it says, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Remember what he said? He said, read this book I pray. He said, it can't. It's sealed. And I saw a strong Malachim proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And no man in Shamahim, nor in Arats, neither under the Arats, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Remember what he told Daniel, seal up the book. So that means nobody knew that this book was talking about Yahushua HaMashiach. Seal it up. They don't know. He said, I wept much because there was no man found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Yehuda, the root of Daud, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So that means you know who opened the book up? Hamashiach opened the book up. That means Hamashiach opened the book up to do what? To give a man eyes to see because a man said clear as day, I covered your eyes. So that means he's telling you right now, without Yehusha Hamashiach, you can't see. It's going to be impossible. Come on back to John chapter 9. Because I know it was told to me that it was asked of well asked of another individual about me that if I was such an evil, wicked individual, then how could I be able to preach a word and preach Yahushua HaMashiach along with clean living and line it up with understanding and they didn't get a response to their query. Now I know me, and I'm speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for the person who asked the query. I know for myself, if I ask somebody a question like that, and they don't respond and then take the trite of, I don't want to talk to you or deal with you no more, then I take that as that is a red flag. Because you're going to sit back and look at, I can't say he wicked because I know y'all don't give gifts to sinners. Because sinners is somebody who is in continual state of transgression. You know what I'm talking about? He's just flat out wicked, you carnal, you do what you want to do when you want to do it. You know what I'm saying? If I acknowledge, well, if you telling me he got this, then I have also technically acknowledge that. Then obviously that person can't be wicked, he can't be evil, and y'all yeah. have to be with him. So what's the easiest track for me to take? Say nothing. Because that's either or, because it's in, in between. And I had the question read to me, and it was framed properly to where you're going to have to give me a concrete answer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? And no answer was given. So I'm saying, speaking for myself, that is a red flag. You know what I'm saying? Because you got, I remember a long time ago, we were standing in the townhouse, and Nell said she seen somebody talking about speaking in tongues, and she said she was pondering upon that. And she said it came to her head, you know I don't give my gifts to sinners. Mm -hmm. Now I know full well she's not talking to herself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? She wouldn't tell herself that because she didn't even have any knowledge in the word at that time to even know that he wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? It's one thing for certain and two things for sure. Y'all's not going to give any gift or ability to somebody who doesn't believe and somebody who is unclean, who has no desire to walk right. I'm going to tell you something. Every single solitary preacher in this word, with the acceptance of Yahushua HaMashiach, was in an unclean state when they took off. You know what I'm talking about? Every last one of them. And I'm going to show you that with Peter. Because y'all was sitting down schooling Peter. Peter going to turn around and tell him, I shall get away from me. I'm a sinful man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? You sit back and look at how carnal Peter was. He was sitting there hearing the word and still put a sword out to cut a nigga ear off. <laughs> Even to the point, like I said, like I wanted to hit this tonight. Satan mean adversary. And one of the meanings of Satan and be mean an adversary, it can be a superhuman adversary or it can be a person. Yeah. Yeah. This is why he said, get behind me, Satan. You are in a fist of me when he was talking to Peter. He wasn't calling Peter the devil. He was saying that Peter was being an adversary. Yeah. That's why y'all don't sit back and look at sometimes the adversary is actual human beings and not actually Satan himself, but people who are controlled and motivated by Satan. And the adversary will always come to get you to be in the flesh and go against the word. Mm -hmm. And the adversary will always come to get you to die. Yeah. That's what the adversary does. That's why he say we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. You know what I'm saying? That's why we able to spot him. You know what I'm saying? Because I was asked this question before I proceed. Like, okay. Can you believe on Mashiach? Do something wrong and go to hell. If you believe on Mashiach... Why would you abstain from doing wrong if you know you're going to hell anyway? You know what I'm talking about? You're going to abstain from doing wrong just to burn? You know what I'm talking about? You might as well go do what you want to do if you're going to burn. Who's going to abstain from committing sin, abstain from the flesh, and get the reward of a sinner? You got to sit there and think about that. Will y'all render judgment in that case? You did something wrong. Because we don't sit back. We're going to look at Peter. Because what I told y'all earlier, Peter did dissimulation or discord among brethren, which is an offense to Yahuwah. That's an offense what he did because he was scared of the Yahudim and what they were going to say. You know this man had the Ruach. But he did something wrong, but it wasn't something that he did. It was on a repeated basis. It was sick. You know what? Okay, y'all came and straightened him. That's over with. Let me finish this John chapter 9. Verse 32. He says, since the world began, this is John 9. You can know chapter 9. Since the world began, it was not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind. If this man were not of Elohim, he could do nothing. Now y'all know what you can 15 of John 15 says. He said, without me, you can do nothing. This is the point where I'm trying to sit back and express to you. You cannot preach the word of Yah or have any ability with Yah without him. The book is clear on that. That man said, if, he was, if I was not an Elohim, I could not preach the son in any shape, form, or fashion. Not in detail and not consistently for three plus years. It would be impossible. There would be no adding on the information. There, would be, there, there wouldn't be the ability to see things that we didn't even hit a year ago. We done, been in, we done looked at Genesis chapter 2 in so many different ways before we looked at Eve being the Ruach and looking at Adam's side getting sealed up as the seal of the covenant. You know what I'm talking about? Or sitting back looking at him getting cut and showing circumcision. You know what I'm talking about? That didn't come on my own. Truth be told, that came on the spot two weeks ago. Somebody said, son, inspiration came right then. Mm -hmm. Wasn't nothing that I studied on. It's been plenty of times where we done dealt with stuff and I just didn't say it to y'all that it came right then and there on the spot. That's not of myself. I mean, you know, nobody is that smart. No matter what, contrary to popular belief. Isaiah 35, because we got the roll, tie, roll. It might have been John chapter 12, what I had in my mind. Well, I called for Acts 22 and 14, so let's go on right now. Well, that's in my head. Act 22 and 14. I forget the verse, but I know that one of them people asked, uh, asked that question. He said, can a sinner open the eyes of the blind? Nope. Well, I think that's what we just read. I just probably had it in my head that it said something different. Acts 22 and about verse 14. 
This is what he said. And he said, The Elohim of our fathers have chosen thee, that thou should know his will, and see that just one, and thou should hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. You know what I'm talking about? This is one of the instances where we line this up when we preach about that. Open my eyes and behold one of the things out of our law and use Paul. That's why he blinded Paul. You know what I'm talking about? And then when Paul opened his eyes again, after his eyes was open, he was able to see the sun. But he said to see that just one. That's why he made Paul blind to open his eyes. Not literally. It wasn't literally about being blind. You know what I'm saying? The people had, they couldn't see. He said, these people have ears to hear, but cannot hear, eyes to see, and cannot see, and a heart that can't understand and perceive, lest they should understand and convert it and be healed. You know what I'm saying? Because you got eyes, but yet you blind. You got ears, but yet you deaf. So Mashiach come to unstop your ears and open your eyes. And the only way that can happen is through the preaching of Yahushua HaMashiach. Only through the word. And we didn't already look at it. Without Elohim, a man can do nothing. I would not be here sitting here right now doing this without Elohim. There's no way. Because I went 28 years beforehand without the ability to do it. So guess what I tell you? He wasn't with me to be able to do it. The book was sealed. I couldn't see it, couldn't understand it, couldn't read it, didn't know nothing, done read it. Do you know how amazing it is for me to sit back and look at it? I can understand a book that I done sat back and read in years past and had no idea what it was talking about. Mm -hmm. three. Come on back to Isaiah 35, man. I can remember being locked up about 2003 sitting there reading Revelation in the book of Job. I'm like, boy, I have no idea what this is talking about. Desperately wanting to know. You know what I'm talking about? Mm. Let's look at verse 5 and uh, verse 6 though. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. You know what that means? Talking about the tongue of the dumb, that means those that couldn't speak. For in the wilderness shall waters break out in streams in the desert, and the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land spring of water, springs of water, and the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes, and a highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of Kadesh. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. That man say nothing unclean can even come across Mashiach. Because he say he the way, the truth, and the life, right? And this is what it says that Apollos from Alexandria was instructed in. So all he knew was the set apart way. So all he knew was the law and the prophets. He didn't know nothing else. Let's look at Deuteronomy 29 and 29 before we look at Amos 3 and 7 and Romans 16 and 24. Just bear with me. I promise this is a conclusion of the matter. And I promise you we're going to go in the law and sit back and show you Moses doing the same thing. And we're going to show you Moses revealing a secret, you know what I'm talking about, to a man who wasn't immersed and who went to the people and revealed that same secret to the people. And the people heard it and believed and waited on it. 29 and 29. The secret things belong unto Yahuwah Elohim, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children, that we may do all the words of this Torah. So that means all the people had was the law in. That's all they had. Amos 3 and 7. All the people knew was that uh, uh, all the people knew was that a, a Mashiach would come, right? Now I want y'all to hear Amos 3 and 7. We're going to read verse 8 though. Look what he tells you. Along with it. He said, surely Yahuwah Elohim will do nothing. But he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. The lion have roared. Who will not fear? Now what you say? What did they just say Mashiach roared? Lion, he said, the lion has roared. Who's not going to respect that? Mm -hmm. He says, and Yahuwah Elohim has, has spoken. Who can but prophecy? So guess what that means? Can't nobody prophesy Yahushua HaMashiach unless y'all speak. Because the testimony of Yahushua is the Ruach of prophecy. So that means if y'all ain't put it in them, they can't do it. Which is mean without Elohim, a man can do nothing. You know what I'm talking about? You can't do it without it. Revelate, I mean Romans 16 to 24. 
This going to tie back to sit back and look at what Moses did. Because what Moses ended up doing is prophesying. And he said, who can but prophecy and let y'all speak? If I'm testifying to Yahushua HaMashiach, that means I am literally prophesying. You know what I'm talking about? That means we are actually speaking of things that are to come to pass if they hadn't came to pass. Like when we sit back and talk about his coming or the resurrection of the dead or us being transformed into his likeness and his image, that is prophesying. You know what I'm talking about? Because you testify to Yahushua HaMashiach. That's what the whole prophecy in the book is about. They say no scripture of the, he say no scripture is of any private interpretation. So that means if anybody, who, if, if y'all's not with you, that's what most of y'all done seen the whole time you was in the Christian church or the whole time you were dealing with Hebrew Israelites as you were seeing them giving a private interpretation. You know what I'm talking about? Their personal opinion on what this is talking about. He said, Kadesh men of Elohim spake as they were moved as the Ruach, by the Ruach HaKadesh. That means a man can't speak unless y'all's spirit is in him to move him to say it. It's, that's just the bottom line. Because some of y'all know this here, y'all know this here, that people done ask me, how can you speak what you're speaking? How can you say what you say? How do you know what you know? I can't do it without him. Every time I say it's by him, you know what ends up happening? That means the Father in heaven is esteemed because I've given the esteem to his son. Mm -hmm. That means it's no honor or esteem coming unto me. It's going to where it belongs, to he who created Shamahim in Iraq. I dare not take credit for it. I dare not. You know what I'm saying? Without y'all, no one can do nothing. Why do you think he told you it's not good for man to be alone? I give him a help me. Because without this help me, you surely can do nothing. You can't do this by yourself. This is what he's telling you. Just like what Will spit on the song. Y'all team strong to my last breath. And I can't do it on my own. I need y'all's help. So when you sit back saying I can't do it on my own, I need y'all's help. That means I need Eve. I need the mother of all living. I need the Ruach HaKadosh. I can't do it on my own. If I do it, if I can do it on my own, that means I don't need y'all. That means man is sufficient of itself. And we know that's a lie. Shoot, I'm tripping, boy. My, my older brother called me last night like, boy, I got to get my life together. Boy, I was reading something in the script like he was dealing with Egypt, Thailand, and all that stuff. I don't know why y'all had him come across bad big brother like, boy, I'm throwing all of it in the toilet. I need to learn these laws and get my soul right. I mm. said, praise y'all. He called me with that last night. He say, bro, what I'm going to do, boy, I got these tats on me, man. I say, you good, just don't get no more. He say, bro, you know I've been married before. I say, boy, you just going to have to buy a single until she die or go back to her. He say, well, boy, that's what I'm going to have to do then. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm talking about brother and looked at a couple videos, but I ain't said nothing to bro about none of that. That means y'all put it on his heart, boy, you got to get right. He done tossed all that stuff in the garbage. Now he talking about y'all team strong. That way it's mine at. Praise you know what I'm saying? Praise y'all indeed. That's what happens sometimes. You know what I'm talking about? Man, I ain't sit back and wake up and get out of prison and be like, boy, I'm going to be a Yahoo demon. I'm going to preach the word. I'm like, boy, I'm going to get me some money and some weed. You know what I'm talking about? Boy, I got to get me a damn time. My 90 days, I'm like, boy, I get a job, get out my people how? You know what I'm saying? Like, they said, that's why I wanted to go to work. But listen, I'm going to burn the word. They got to read the word in prison. It wasn't on my mind. It wasn't on my brain. But when that man say, come on after me, well, guess what? You drop everything and go. Just like he told Matthew. He walked up to Matthew, the public, and he say, follow me. He dropped everything and let him go. You know what I'm saying? When that word came, he say, son, come follow me. I'm gone. Everything's dropped. Whatever direction you want me to go in, that's what I'm going to go in. I done told you numerous times, if that man wanted to be a member, be a, be a member of a congregation and not preach, that's what I would have did. It doesn't matter. It ain't about my will, it's about his will. Who cares what you want to do? At the end of the day, what's the number one objective? Get in the kingdom. So does it matter if you preach it or not to get in there? You ain't got to be a preacher to get in that door. No, sir. So it don't matter to me, as long as I'm there. But see, I'm also show you that thing of the talent, what I was telling somebody earlier. It's actually a greater sin for me, for him to give me information and keep it to myself. You know what I'm saying? That's actually an enormous sin. That's actually wicked on my part to have a word and be quiet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't realize that. Like, you think this man would give somebody that level of information to keep it to themselves. I'm going to be saved, right? I'm sitting back looking at you like you want to know it. I'm like, damn. That's a nasty nigga. When you look at it, guess what, though? It's somebody around here doing it. That's why he gave the parable. 16 to 24 Romans. He said, the grace of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, be with you all. So be it. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my preaching. 
or to my gospel in the preaching of Yahushua HaMashiach according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. When you sit back looking at mystery, all that means is a hidden truth. Now it said that Mashiach came to open the eyes of the blind. So don't you realize that if he gives his word to somebody to preach his son, what would that do, sir? I'm saying if Mashiach came to open the eyes of the blind of himself, right? And then he gives the testimony of himself to an individual, a, a flesh and blood man, then what would that man be doing? Would he not be opening the eyes of the blind, same as his master? Yeah, you would hope, you know, some people ain't going to open. Uh, <laughs> but now it's made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the everlasting commandment of the everlasting Allah, he made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So the actual preaching of Yahushua HaMashiach is to cause you to obey because of your faith, right? So let's come back to Acts chapter 18, and let's knock a pilot's on out the box. So now we see that he was instructed in the way of Yahuwah, right? Now I'm going to sit back and you're going to sit back and see something. Because you're going to read this man wasn't immersed in the, in, the, in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. But you're going to see that. You know what the word fervent is. That means to be passionate or zealous or serious in it. That's what it means. Verse 25 again. This man was instructed in the way of Yahuwah, being fervent in the Ruah. And he spake and taught diligently, diligently of the things of Yahuwah, knowing only the immersion of John. So now we need to go to John chapter, Matthew chapter 3, right, and see about the immersion of John, don't we? That's what we need to do. Let's go do that. Let's just get some understanding. I say, man, we just did this because it was asked of me. So I go ahead and do it. And maybe it helped everybody out. If anybody even had the same question in their own mind and in their own heart. What was the question? Uh, how could I be able to speak the things that are I don't want to read. Sit back over here. Uh, the question is uh, about me not having the ru having the ruach and not being immersed in claiming Yah with me, and about speaking on the ruach being present with me long before I was immersed. Now, obviously, uh. We're looking at somebody, the Paulus Alexandria, and Yah was with him before he was immersed. Because he said he was fervent in the Ruach. You know what I'm talking about? And he spake diligently of the things that were of Yahuwah. But all the things that he knew was, was the law. You know what I'm talking about? Let's look at the immersion of John. And we're looking at Matthew 3 and 5. It says, And then went out to him Jerusalem, and all... Judea, and all the region around about Jordan, and were immersed of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his immersion, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that Elohim is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Abraham. And now also is the axe laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bring not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed immerse you with water unto repentance. So this is what John's immersion is about. You know what I'm talking about? But he that come after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall immerse you with the Ruach HaKadosh and with fire. So what is this immersion with fire, gentlemen? What is this immersion with fire? No, I'm talking about, he just said, he separated. He said, he's going to he he immerse you with the Ruach HaKadosh and with fire. Oh, oh. So these are two different things. Huh? The furnace. the furnace of affliction. So this is what he said he's going he's gonna to immerse you with. This is what him, that, let's look at Acts chapter 1. You can read what Mashiach said itself. Let's look at Acts chapter 1. You see what Mashiach said itself. Acts 1 and 4. Because these men were immersed unto the baptism of John. He finna tell them this. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard of me. For, for you who cannot truly immerse with water, but you shall be immersed with the Ruach HaKadosh not many days hence. You know what I'm talking about? 
Because you got to remember, they said the apostles went about, they were saying that they were baptizing, but Mashiach wasn't baptizing. So what y'all don't actually realize and understand, at that time, they were not immersing people in Yahushua's name because he had not been glorified. That would have been a pointless endeavor. You know what I'm talking about? At that time, they were just doing immersions for, the, for, the, for repentance, for the confession of sins. Mm -hmm. Two totally different immersions. That immersion don't come with no ruach. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So when you turn around and look at it, the confession of sins before you emerge into Yahushua HaMashiach, you can confess your sins long before that, and that would be the same as being immersed to John's baptism, so to speak. You know what I'm talking about? Not many people will stand up and say, boy, I did this, 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 I did this. A lot of people don't want to let it be known some of the things that they done done. I done stood in the street and sat back and told Nick all type of things that I done done. I done told y'all some of these type of things. You know what I'm saying? I lived a boring life. I ain't going to tell you, ain't tell you no lie. You know, I wanted more boring drug dealers you would ever come across in your entire life. You know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, nigga did a lot of evil out here on these streets, though. Come on back to Acts 18. We in verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took unto him and expounded unto him the way of Elohim more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass in the H.A. of the brethren wrote, exhorting disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through favor. And for he mightily convinced the Yahudim, and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Yahushua was Hamashiach. So this man was not immersed according to to the back of the immersion of uh, Yahushua HaMashiach. But yet, by the Ruach of Mashiach, he was able to testify of him because he said, without Elohim, you can do nothing. Now, let's look and see in Exodus chapter 4. Let's see if we can see Moses doing the same thing. Exodus 4 and 10. And it says, And Moses said unto Yahuwah, O my master, I am not eloquent, neither here, here, heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And Yahuwah said unto him, Who have made man's mouth, or who make the dumb, or the deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I, Yahuwah? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my master, send I pray thee by the hand of whom thou wilt send. And the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he come forth to meet thee, and when he see thee, he will be glad in his heart. And you know what that sit back and you look at? He said, He'll come forth to meet thee, and he'll be glad in his heart. You know what we can line it up with? You line it up with John, because John was a Levite, and when he saw Mashiach, he was glad in his heart. He said, and thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what, teach you, what you shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of Elohim. So what you see is, is you see Moses is as Elohim giving a word to a man. And the man is going to turn around and give that secret that was hidden to the people. Yes, sir. Now we're going to drop down about verse 28 or 27. And Yahuwah said unto Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. And he went and met him in the Mount of Elohim and kissed him. And Moses told Aaron all the words of Yahuwah who had sent him and all the signs which he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of the children of Yasharal. And Aaron spake all the words which Yahuwah had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of Yahuwah. And the people believed. And when they heard that Yahuwah had visited the children of Yasharal and that he had looked upon their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. So now what we sit back and realize, right? You see Yah giving a man a word. You know what I'm talking about? He sat back and gave this man a word to go take to the people. Now let's go look at Acts chapter 4. Let's go look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and about verse 1. Then you could get John chapter 3 and about verse 28, I suppose. <coughs> He 
say, moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea, and were all baptized under Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did eat all the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Mashiach. So if they were all immersed under Moses, Moses hadn't been immersed into nothing yet. And neither did Aaron did either. But what do we see y'all doing? Because in Exodus chapter 4, they were in an unclean state. They were in Egypt. They were in bondage. But y'all visited them and gave them the word. And the word that they gave opened the eyes of the people that they might believe. Faith come by hearing and hearing come by the word of Elohim. And the only way you can open the eyes of the blind is by the word of Elohim. Because the man say, I've shut your eyes that you, you can't see. This is how we can see a framework of why there's a, there's a, a way for Apollos to do what he did. It has to be a, a scriptural validation for Apollos to do what he did. Mm -hmm. So if we see Moses and Aaron doing what Apollos did, then we got two witnesses to back up Apollos because he did the same thing for Moses. Moses turned around and did it for Aaron, and Aaron took it to the people. We can see Apollos doing the same thing. Oh, okay. Moses knew of no immersion. Yeah. Aaron knew of no immersion. Mm -hmm. All Apollos knew was of John's. Come over here to John 3 and 28. Huh? Then get numbers 11 and 31, if I'm not mistaken. Where are you going? 3 and 27 is better. Hey. 26. Or 25. John 3 and 25. Okay. He said, Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Yahudim about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bear witness, behold, the same baptized, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it were given him from Shamahim. So you can't get nothing unless it's given to you from on high. Moses got what he got from on high. Aaron got what he got from on high. Apollos got what he got from on high. What I'm able to do, I get that from on high. You can't do that on your own. That man say, the secret belong unto Yah. He said, I made the eyes of them. He said, I made the blind, the deaf, the lame. I made all of them. That means I can make a man, if you lame, that means you can't walk straight. So when he said, I made the lame, that means I can make him walk upright. I can make him see and I can make him hear. And what's going to make him do that is my word. He said, yet yeah, you yourselves bear witness that I said, I am not the Mashiach, but I am sent before him. He that have the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom would stand and hear him rejoice greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my this my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that come from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speak of the earth. He that come from Shamahim is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, he hath testified, and no man received his testimony. He that have received his testimony have set to his seal that Elohim is true. For he whom Elohim hath sent speak the words of Elohim, for he give not the Ruach by measure unto him. The Father loved the Son and have given all things into his hand. He that believe on the Son have everlasting life. He that believe not on the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of Elohim abide on him. Now we know why the wrath of Elohim abide on him. Because Deuteronomy 19 says, If you won't hear the mouth of the prophet that I send, I will require it of him. But the key thing of what he mentioned here is he said, He that received the testimony of the Son set to the seal that Elohim is true, and whom Elohim hath sent, speak the words of Elohim. Mm -hmm. He said, He that is of Elohim, hears Elohim's words. You hear them not because you're not of Elohim. A man, Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23 and I think 12. Uh, no, not 23 and 12. 23 and about uh, 21. Make it 18. Make it 16. 23 and 16. He said, Thus saith Yahuwah of hosts, 
Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out the mouth of Yahuwah. So the first way you'll be able to tell if somebody is a, if Yah with him and put the word in his mouth, are they speaking a vision that's of their own mind? Or are they speaking a vision that comes from Yah's word? Because he said it'll make you worthless. If the preaching of Yahushua HaMashiach and how to follow and serve Yah is being preached, then that comes from him. That means you wouldn't be worthless. You know, if you're vain, that's all basically basically saying you reprobate. Your mind is going to do those things that are not convenient. You're going to seek to walk in the flesh and not in the Ruach. Yeah. They still say unto them that despise me, Yahuwah hath said, you shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walk after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. So those who speak a vision out of their own heart is going to tell the people who are doing all men are wrong that shalom is going to be with you. And nothing wrong is ever going to happen to you. For who have stood in the council of Yahuwah and perceived and heard his word, who have marked his word and heard it? So who stood and, and looked at the recommended course of action to do what Yah said? Those who have received the testimony that the Son is true. He said, Behold, a grievous whirlwind of Yahuwah is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind, it shall grievously fall upon the head of the wicked. The anger of Yahuwah shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days thou shalt consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran, I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from their evil doings. So if you turn and sit back and look at this, uh, uh, when you look at most of them, if, if, if Yah's with them, then you gonna, he going to cause you to hear Yah's words. It's mean if you hear Yah's words, then you will have faith. Faith come by hearing, hearing come by the word of Elohim, and then you would be a just individual because you would walk according to that faith. You know what I'm saying? That's why Masha, I say, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man do his will, he would know if the doctrine is mine, whether the doctrine is of Elohim or whether I speak of myself. Somebody who's going to sit back and, they, and Yah's not with them, they're going to seek to glorify and esteem themselves. They're going to point the finger at themselves. They're not going to point the finger at, 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 at in Shamahim and point you to Yah. They're going to point you to them. Why he say, curse be the man that trusteth in man. That's what a false prophet going to do. They're going to point you to look at them. That I'm the one. They're not going to point you to the one who sent them and gave them the ability to do what they're doing. Drop down about verse 27. Well, 29 actually. He says, not my word like as a fire. Well, it's verse 28, my apologies. He said, the prophet that have a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, say of Yahuwah? We don't look at this before. Y'all know what that go back to. That go to the parable of the sower. The chaff is that to be burned. That's the wheat and the tares. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a separation. He says, not my word like as a fire, say of Yahuwah. Or like a hammer that break a rock in pieces. We looked at that before. His word was like a rock that break a hammer that break a rock in pieces. Because the same way we looked in uh Jeremiah chapter 10, and he said they fastened it to a tree with, with nails and a hammer. And you sit back and look at a Mashiach is that cheap cornerstone, that rock, and they broke him into pieces when they put him up there on the stake because it's his word that broke him into pieces. You know what I'm talking about? And you'll sit back and look at that same word will break you into pieces. It'll break you into pieces to humble you, to bring you down so y'all can lift you up. But he said, you heard he said, he that have my word, let him speak my word faithfully. He said, he that have a dream, let him speak a dream. So a false prophet is going to speak the things of his own heart and his own mind. If y'all's not with him, he won't have the ability to manifest y'all's word. And another key thing in the V is, just like y'all know from looking at most one West camps, they're going to preach the same thing. It's never going to be nothing new. You know, the book say, man, Hamashiach say clearly in the 6th chapter of John, the 63rd verse, he say, it is the flesh profit of nothing. The Ruach is, uh, it's the Ruach that quickens. The word that I speak unto you, they are Ruach and they are light. They spirit and they are light. That means Yah's word is continually alive, continually evolving. Anybody that's just stuck on the same pattern, y'all sit back and look at, man, by the grace of Yahushua HaMashiach, by way of our Abba Yahuwah Elohim and Shamahim, this man has given us a wealth of information. On numerous different topics and numerous different ways. We were just talking to a brother in Virginia about, he asking me about, how, what, does, what did that mean when he said he preached to the spirits in prison? 
And by the grace of Yahushua Mashiach, we done seen how he preached to the spirits in prison like eight different ways. Yes, I'm not that smart to be able to do that. Troy was on the phone with me. He was like, his favorite one was Joseph. Mm -hmm. When we flipped it from Joseph. And there are people walking this earth that'll sit back and look at it and say, we reaching, we making that up. That's not talking about that. That's wrong. But we sitting back and looking at it in its clearest day. So when we see it, we set to the seal that Elohim is true. They say only those who Elohim have given the word to can speak that. He's got to get that. Matter of fact, Romans chapter 12. All I'm sitting back really dealing with, and praise y'all, because it actually tie into what we were looking at. Uh, 12 and about verse 3. It actually look at what we were dealing with last week about... It's not good for man to be alone. Yah gave Adam the help. You know what I'm talking about? Without Yah, Adam could do nothing. He couldn't reproduce. He couldn't make no sons out of him. There could be no living because he had no help me. All that turn around back showing you is again is that without Yah, man can't do nothing. We can't do nothing on our own. Once we sit back and realize that we can't do nothing on our own and that we need Yah's help, we need Eve. We need hot walk, we'll be all right then, won't we? Then you'll realize where your power and where your strength come from. It's from out, it's in you, but it's from outside of you. It says, For I say through the favor given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, accordingly as I as Elohim have dealt to every man the measure of faith. You know how he said he don't give the ruach by measure? Mm -hmm. Then see, we can go line that up with 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He said, for we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we being one, being many are one body in Mashiach, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the favor that is given unto us. Wherefore, prophecy, let us prophecy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, let us minister, wait on our ministry, or he that teach on teaching, or he that exhort on exhortation. He that give, let him do it with simplicity. He that rule with diligence. He that show mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. That's why he turned around and he told you a man will cleave to his wife and there'll be one flesh. Cleave to the Ruach, cleave to Mashiach. That's which is good. Because he said it wasn't good for man to be alone. So obviously when he made Eve, then it was good. That's telling us as we cleave to Mashiach, it'll be good. Now he said dissimulation. So let's go over here to Galatians chapter 2 so you can see the dissimulation of what we were talking about with Peter. Two and eleven. That's the same. Like what you gonna see like this here is the same thing like you seen with David. The ruach came on David, right? It never departed. David failed in a singular matter, right? He never repeated that mistake again. You know what I'm talking about? The same thing you really going to look at here with Peter. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them, which were of the circumcision. And the other Yahudim dissembled likewise with him in as much in so much that Barnabas also carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Yahudim, live after the manner of the Gentiles, and do not as the Yahudim, why compel thou the Gentiles to live as the Yahudim? So he said he blamed them according that he didn't walk uprightly according to the, to the, to the, to the word, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see why he would say that. So the first place we're going to look at it, Proverbs chapter 6. We read Numbers 15 the other day. He said, as ye are, so the stranger shall be. One man of law for you as well as for the stranger. So when Paul turned around and say the man's not walking up rightly according to the word, he said he was to be blamed. That means he did something wrong. Proverbs 6 and 16. These six things do after Yahuwah hate, yea, seven are abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devised wicked imaginations, feet that be swift, and running to mischief, 
a false witness that speak lies, and he that sow discord among brethren. Even though that was not Peter's intent, you know what I'm talking about? That's what he did. Because he just said, Paul just said, not only did you call the other Yahudim to get caught up in your dissembly, he said, but even Barnabas got caught up in it. Mm -hmm. Now, if the, if the Gentiles, we know he said, who is my mother, who is my brother, who is my sister, but he that with the will of Elohim. If the Gentiles are doing the will of Elohim, then that's his brother. Mm -hmm. So when he did this, he was sowing discord among brethren. It, and, and we can't sit back and look at the timeline, but more than likely this was after the vision that he got in Acts. Because he said, I perceive that Elohim is not a respecter of persons. He that doeth righteousness shall be accepted with him. So not only that, but Peter had respect of persons on top of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? These are transgressions. These are, this is wrong. Let's look at Numbers 15 and 15. Now we're going to sit back and look at Peter did something wrong, but you know Peter going to be in, in the kingdom of Shamahim because they say the names of the apostles are going to be on the gates. We'll read Revelation 21 so you can see his name going to be on that too. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourn with you. An ordinance forever in your generations as ye are so the stranger shall be before you. One Torah and one manna shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourn with you. Remember, we looked at that other day. There's neither Yahudim, no Greek, no male, no female, no bond, no free. And he was trying to So when he was doing that, he was actually causing a schism in the body. But again, it was more because of his fear of the people. Mm -hmm. This is what moved him to, to, for Paul to say, well, you don't walk upright. To not walk upright and be blamed mean you done transgress. But this is, I said, that's an abomination before. Y'all but sit back, what did y'all do? He put that away. Peter didn't walk in a continual state in this fashion, but he was showing you that there was a man, he did something that was wrong. The same way y'all done sat back and seen a congregation that y'all know of that were doing things that were wrong, and y'all showed them it was wrong, and they changed it. Just like we done did certain things that were wrong, and you changed it. That doesn't mean that y'all's not with you. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. That don't mean that. That's the mercy when y'all show you that. He say, bless them who are chastening. You know what's scared if you're doing something wrong, and y'all don't show you nothing. Revelation 21 and 12. And the wall, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gate twelve Malachim, the names written therein, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Yasharal. And on the east three gates, and on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates, and on the wall the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And if y'all remember, that goes back to the twelve pillars of Moses, right? In the wilderness. They had the names of the tribes of Yasharal. Because I was already showing you about them foundations for the gates of the kingdom. So now go get Ephesians 2 and 19. He said, Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the Kadeshim and of the household of Elohim. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Yahushua HaMashiach being the chief cornerstone, and whom all the building fitly framed together grow into a Kadesh temple in the master, and whom you are building together for a habitation of Elohim through the Ruach. All this sitting back telling you is the same thing you sit back and look at with Apollos from Alexandria. His foundation was built upon the prophets. Obviously, he didn't know nothing about the apostles at this time. You know what I'm talking about? But his foundation was built upon the prophets. I told y'all I'll show you what Peter said he was an unclean man. Let me go and get it. I think that's the book of Luke. Book of Luke, fifth chapter, third verse. You got to realize, man, these men ain't had no ruach with them. They didn't have a ruach hakadesh, but Hamashiach gave them a word and sent them around there preaching. He said he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and talked the people out of the ship. Now when he left speaking, he said unto Simon, Lodge out into the deep, and let down your nets for a drop. Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night, and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. 
And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes in their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Peter, Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Yahushua's knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O master. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of fishes which they had taken. And so was James and John, the son of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Yahushua said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Now Peter just made a proclamation to Mashiach. What was that proclamation he made? He said, I'm a sinner, didn't he? Mm -hmm. But yet he said, come on with me. I'm going to get you right. You know what I'm saying? You know what the thing he told him before he died? He said, you're clean now from the word that I've spoken unto you, didn't he? He said, abide in me and I in you, and you shall bring forth much fruit. He said, if you abide in the vine, you can do anything. He said, but for without me, you can do nothing. We're going to end that Matthew 11 and 25. It went a little longer than I would have liked. Matthew 11 and 25. He said, at that time, Yahushua answered and said, I thank thee, O Abba, master of Shamahim and Arras. Because thou hid these things from the rise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, I before it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man know the Son but the Father. Neither know any man the Father save the Son, and to he whomsoever the Son will reveal it. Hold on, John chapter 6 and about verse 65. Matter of fact, get Psalm 65 and 4 before we even read. John 6 and 65. Just to sit back and look at it. The son got the... Re that, that's all on y'all, man. You know, a man don't make that determination. I say it's right there in Exodus chapter 32. Well, get Exodus 32 before we read Psalm 65. So you can just hear it out of the law. We can read it out of Romans, but we'll read it out of the law. You can see right there. Exodus 33, I'm sorry, not 32. Exodus 33 and 19. He said, I said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of Yahuwah before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all give favor to who he chooses to give favor to. He doesn't necessarily have to have a reason of why he did it. Why did he show favor to Moses? What was the purpose why he showed favor to Moses? Who can give an explanation why he did it? Anybody got an explanation why he would show favor to Moses? Why would he show favor to David? Why would he show favor to Jeremiah? Why did he show favor to Abraham? Why did he show favor, favor to Noah? He said, by favor or by grace ye are saved. It is not of yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? The thing is, as we turn around and we look at it, there's certain things that we might do or certain things about us which would cause y'all to have mercy on you. Y'all have mercy on him because he chose to see fit to do so. He said, you got vessels that are fitted for salvation. You have vessels that are fitted for destruction, that the power of Elohim might be known through them, which is something I've been wanting to go over for a while because that's what Pharaoh was. Pharaoh was a representation. Misraim was in Egypt was a representation of Yah's wrath because these were vessels fitted for destruction. You know what I'm saying? These people were made, primed, and cocked to be destroyed. That's why he hardened their heart that they couldn't even hear the word when he sent Moses to tell a man, let my people go. But he hardened Pharaoh's heart because Pharaoh had that deceitfulness of sin. See, just like we read the other day, what, 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 what it said about Moses, that he would rather suffer affliction with the children of Elohim to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. The same way that he said he refused to be called Pharaoh's son. The same way Yahushua turned around and looked at Yah and said, I refuse to be called the son of Yahuwah. I will go down here and suffer the, 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 the affliction with the people of Elohim. That's why when, when Satan came to tempt him with the pleasures of sin, he rejected it. He'd rather suffer with his own people. That's why he said, if you be the son of Elohim, turn these breads into stone. He said, man, go ahead on with all that there, man. I'm not the son of Elohim right now. I'm the son of man. Let me go down here and suffer with my people. Y'all sit back and remember. Remember when we looked at why we looked at why did Satan say turn these stones into bread? Y'all didn't even realize when we dealt with that, that man gave me that on the spot. How am I know that? How am I know that? That takes the skill and ability that can only come from y'all to be able to expound upon something like that. Mm -hmm. 
You know, ain't, ain't nobody that smart. I, well, I thank y'all for the word, man. I thank y'all for the bill. I thank y'all for the murder. Like, I don't have no mind to go commit sin whatsoever. I don't have no mind to go to the world or nothing. Because if I had a mind to do all that, I guarantee you I wouldn't be sitting right here right now. I'd be out here doing my thing, boy. Like this here, boy. If you like this here, boy, we're going to eat, drink, and tomorrow we die. Boy, that mean, boy, I'm finna go out here and try to sleep with every woman I could possibly sleep with. Smoke the most exotic marijuana I could possibly smoke. Pull whatever scheme I, I can possibly pull to get the money to do everything that I could possibly do. Because, boy, when, boy, once y'all leave from me, you're going to end up worse off than what you were before you started. Yes, sir. You're not going to sit back and be like, boy, you going to hell and you believe and abstain from sin. Abstain from doing wrong. It don't make sense. Your mind is going to change to, I'm going to go do wrong. Mm -hmm. I got a desire to go do wrong. And you're going to say things that are wrong. You know, that's what he said in Proverbs 8. He said, a froward mouth, I do hate. A froward mouth is a rebelliously contrary mouth. That's why he said the prophets prophesy a dream of their own heart. And they make you vain. Because they're going to tell you things that are going to go against the word to tell you to go live against the word. Y'all is not going to put a word in the mouth of somebody who's damned to tell you to obey. Tell you to believe. He going to put a word in that mouth. Well, that man going to speak his own words. He going to tell you, hey, man, ain't no evil going to come upon you for what you're doing. Y'all surely going to bless you. That man told you in Deuteronomy 29, he'll blot your name out from Shamahim. If you sit back and you talking about you had mad uh, drunkenness to thirst and walk in the imagination of your own heart and say you can worship idols and do this and do that and there ain't going to be no recompense for it. That's what a man who's speaking a vision out of his own heart going to do. You know what that's going to do? That's going to make you worthless. That's what you was when you was in the Christian church. You were worthless. That's what you were when you were dealing with Hebrew Israel. You were worthless. You know what I'm talking about? You got to turn around and look at it. What we talking about ain't going to make nobody worthless. It's going to make somebody have worth. That worth is going to be the son dwelling if you if you believe and obey. They say, ain't no, what the book say, ain't no lie the truth. Mm -hmm. So ain't going to be no lie to Yahushua HaMashiach. If it's a lie to Yahushua HaMashiach, we got to eat, drink, and be merry because tomorrow we die. Psalm 65 and 4. He said, Baruch, uh, blessed is the man whom thou choose and cause to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even thy Kadesh temple. That means that, that's going right back to what we said. He said, can't no man know the Father except the Son revealing to him. That means y'all choose who we choose to come to approach unto him. No man has anything to do with that. I didn't, I didn't wake up one day and say, boy, I'm going to do this or do that. He had to cause me and draw me to him. That's got to come from on high. That don't come from man. That don't even come from the inward parts of a man. You know what I'm saying? He said, who can make the crooked thing straight? So nobody can't make themselves come to Yah. Yah got to draw you. That's why he say, blessed is the man whom you choose and cause to approach or draw unto you. That means if you sitting right here right now and you listening to this man's word, it's to cause you to draw unto him. Unless you a vessel fitted for destruction. John 6 and 65. Then Hebrews 4 and 1. Make it John 6 and 63. It is the Ruach that quicken, the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are Ruach and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Yahushua knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore I said, said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. That means it's got to come from Shamahim then, don't it? Can't come from a man's heart. Hebrew form, it can't come from a man's heart. There's nothing that we can do without Yah. You know what I'm saying? It's nothing that we can do without it. Even if you sit back looking at y'all and saying, okay, y'all was with you before you was a murderer. That should have been evident with the word that was coming out my mouth. That should have been evident in and of itself. Because I can't do that on my own. No matter how anybody might try to spin it, make it seem, I cannot do that on my own. I ain't studied that much. And the simple fact is that those I say, because some of y'all came in two years ago, a year ago. But people who've been there 
six years ago, seven years ago, they could sit back and tell you, like, oh yeah, I know he was with them. I watched it increase. You know what I'm saying? We got to get First John chapter 5 after this too. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get the increase. Man can't get the increase. A man can't increase his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You can't do it. Do y'all not realize that I could be in the same state I was? Like, I know dudes who've been preaching the word for years and they in the same. I'm talking about that I know personally. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't talking about people I heard of. Dudes I know personally who are in the same state. Pay no one. Mm -hmm. That man in the same state that he was in. I met this man in 2011. He's in the exact same place he was in in 2011. He in that same place right now. This is going down. Going, going down. Going down. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And I am not in the same place that I was in mm -hmm. in 2011, in 2016. I'm not in the same place. Say Hebrew 4 and 1. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise of being left of us entering into his shalom, any of should seem to come short of it. For the gospel was preached, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. The word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with the faith of them that heard it. You know what I'm saying? So you know what that's telling you? That's going back to what we're looking at. A false prophet who speak a vision of his own heart will make the people worthless. You know what I'm saying? He said, but if it's the true word, it's going to cause a man to have gain. He's going to gain something. But you're not going to gain nothing if the faith is not present. Because we know from Deuteronomy 32 and 20, he said, this is children in whom there is no faith. You know what I'm saying? Our hearts don't be steadfast with y'all. That's why we sit back and realize we don't lock on to them. We don't hold on to them. First John chapter 5, though. Five and nine. Well, five and seven. Six. We'll stop right there. Five and six. First John chapter five, verse six. It says, This is he that came by water and blood, even Yahushua Hamashiach. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Ruach that bear witness, because the Ruach is truth. For there are three that bear record in Shamahim, the Father, the Word, and the Ruach HaKadosh, these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in the rats, the Ruach, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. And we receive the witness of men, the witness of Elohim is greater. For this is the witness of Elohim, which he has testified of his Son. He that believe on the Son of Elohim have witness in himself. He that believe not on Elohim have made him alive, because he believed not the record that Elohim gave of his Son. And this is the record that Elohim given to us, eternal life, and the life is in his Son. So, praise ye y'all for Yahushua HaMashiach in the word. That man said, if we receive witness of men, the witness of Elohim is greater. So, if it was by Elohim that I would even be able to witness of the son, if I would have learned him of a man, that would have been good. But if I get the witness of Elohim, that means that's greater because I set to the seal that Elohim is true. Okay, you just set this thing and close that thing up there to the side. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we got to sit back and turn around and look at it. He said, you set to the seal that Elohim.